Welcome to the next part of the module on Android Concurrency Frameworks, which continues our analysis of the Threaded Downloads application. In this part, we'll show how to implement three different concurrency models using the Android Hammer and Async Task Frameworks. We'll start by analyzing the simplest of the three concurrency models, which is triggered when the user selects the Run Runnable button on the user interface. This selection initiates a call to the Run Runnable method in the Threaded Downloads class, shown at this path name. This method uses the post runnable mechanism of the Hammer framework, described in this earlier video. The Threaded Downloads application uses this framework to retrieve and display an image by starting a background thread, downloading the image in that thread, and then posting a runnable command to the user interface thread, instructing it to display the downloaded image. The Run Runnable method, called when a user clicks the Run Runnable button on the user interface, begins by obtaining the requested URL from the user's input and then informing the user the download has begun via a process dialog, as shown at this link. Finally, this method creates and starts a new thread to download the requested image in the background via an anonymous instance of the Runnable with Handlers class. This private class implements Runnable and its constructor stores the requested URL in a data member. Its run hook method executes in a background thread and calls the download image method to retrieve the image from the server. If all goes well, the downloaded image is displayed in the user interface thread by posting an anonymous runnable command by the activity's run on UI thread method, which uses an internal handler, as shown in this earlier video. The run hook method of this command dismisses the progress dialog and calls the display image method. This method is shared by all three concurrency models. It shows the image on the screen if the download and conversion process succeeded. We'll now analyze the second of the three concurrency models, which is triggered when the user selects the Run Messages button on the user interface. This selection initiates a call to the Run Messages method in the Threaded Downloads class, shown at this path name. This method uses the Send Message mechanism of the Hammer framework, described in this earlier video. The Threaded Downloads application uses this framework to retrieve and display an image by starting a background thread, downloading the image in that thread, and then sending several messages to a handler associated with the user interface thread instructing it to display the downloaded image in that thread. This solution is more complicated than the Run Runnable implementation examined previously, since it passes messages from a background thread to the user interface thread via a message handler class, which extends handler and defines three types of messages that the background thread can pass to the user interface thread, specifying which processing to perform. Message handler also contains a weak reference, which enables it to be garbage collected properly, as described at this link. Its constructor initializes this weak reference to store a reference to the enclosing activity. The handle message hook method processes the specified messages passed to the message handler associated with the user interface thread. These messages instruct the handler to start showing the progress dialog, dismiss it, or display the designated image via an image view object. An instance of message handler is defined as a data member in the threaded downloads class, which passes a reference to itself to the message handler's constructor. The run messages method, called when a user clicks the run messages button on the user interface, begins by obtaining the requested URL from the user's input. It then creates and starts a new thread to download the requested image in the background via an anonymous instance of the runnable with messages class. This private class implements Runnable, and its constructor stores the requested URL in a data member. Its run hook method executes in a background thread and uses the Hammer framework to send messages to the message handler object, which processes them in the context of the user interface thread. Run first stores a copy of the reference to the message handler using the bytecode optimization described at this link. It then creates and sends a message instructing the message handler to start showing the progress dialog to the user. Next, it calls the download image method to retrieve the image from the remote server. If all goes well, a message is created and sent to the user interface thread, instructing it to dismiss the progress dialog. 
Finally, a message is created and sent instructing the message handler to display the image in the user interface thread. We'll now analyze the third and final concurrency model, which is triggered when the user selects the Run Async button on the user interface. This selection initiates a call to the Run Async Task method in the Threaded Downloads class, shown at this path name. This method uses the Async Task framework, which executes long duration operations in one or more background threads, and then gives the user interface thread a chance to process the results, as described in these earlier videos. The Threaded Downloads application uses this framework to retrieve and display an image by calling the execute template method on an async task object, which downloads the image in a background thread that's managed internally by the async task framework. When the image has been downloaded, the framework invokes a hook method that displays the downloaded image in the context of the user interface thread. Compared with the hammer-based solutions, especially the second one that sends and handles messages, the async task solution is easy to program, since there's no need to manipulate threads, messages, runnables, or handlers explicitly. Instead, the framework uses the template method pattern to allow application developers to customize hook methods inherited from the async task base class. The run async task method begins by obtaining the requested URL from the user's input. It then creates and executes an anonymous instance of the download task class. Download task is a private class that extends async task, parameterizing it with a string for the URL type and a bitmap that's used as the return type for the do in background hook method and as a parameter to the on post execute hook method. When the execute template method is called on the download task object, the async task framework invokes its on pre execute hook method, which starts showing the progress dialog in the context of the user interface thread before the task starts executing in the background. When on pre-execute returns, the framework invokes the do in background hook method in the context of a background thread. Do in background forwards the URL passed originally to execute to the download image method, which retrieves the requested image and returns it to the framework. Finally, if all goes well, the framework invokes the on post execute hook method in the context of the user interface thread, passing the downloaded image as a parameter. On post execute dismisses the progress dialog and displays the image to the user. All the switching of context between the user interface and background threads are handled seamlessly and transparently by the async task framework. Now that we've analyzed all three concurrency models implemented by the threaded downloads application, we'll compare and contrast these solutions along several dimensions, including usability, for simple and complex applications, scalability, flexibility, and efficiency. Async Task provides a set of tightly integrated classes that simplify the development of both simple and complex concurrent applications whose long duration operations run in one or more background threads and publish their results to the user interface thread without manipulating threads, handlers, messages, or runnables explicitly. It also enables relatively transparent scalability via its thread pool executor. However, Although the async task framework is scalable and easy to use for both simple and complex concurrent applications, it's not very flexible, since it's only intended for interactions between the user interface thread and background threads, but not interactions between background threads alone. Likewise, its internal framework implementation is very sophisticated, so it incurs higher overhead due to its many levels of indirection and the synchronization, context switching, and data movement costs associated with communicating between the threads as described at this link. In contrast, posting runnables is efficient and easy to use when knowledge of what commands to run can be centralized at the point where the post method is invoked. However, this approach isn't very flexible since it's hard to parameterize or modify commands once they've been posted. Posting runnable commands is also not very scalable since programmers need to manually manage the thread pools. Conversely, Sending messages is more flexible than posting commands or executing async tasks, since client senders are decoupled from handler receivers. For example, messages can contain data that handlers use to process the messages they receive based on their type codes and fields, 
as well as the handler's runtime context. Likewise, senders and receivers can engage in flexible and efficient peer-to-peer -peer conversations by passing messages back and forth to each other between the user interface and background threads, as well as between background threads. However, sending messages is more complicated to use than posting runnable commands, since developers must extend the handle message hook methods of handlers and write explicit logic to process the messages they receive. Likewise, thread pools must be managed manually, which makes this approach hard to scale. Ultimately, the right choice of concurrency model for your application depends on your requirements and your understanding of the Android concurrency frameworks and their associated patterns. In summary, the Threaded Downloads application demonstrated how to implement three concurrency models using the Android Hammer and Async Task frameworks. The solution shared some things in common. For example, all three used a background thread to connect with the remote server and download a file, which are long duration operations that shouldn't run in the user interface thread. Likewise, all three solutions used the user interface thread to perform short duration operations, such as showing and dismissing progress dialogues and displaying the image on the screen. However, the solutions also have some important differences. For example, the background threads and user interface thread in each model communicate in different ways. The first two solutions are based on the Hammer framework, where application code in a background thread explicitly communicates to the user interface thread by posting a runnable command or sending a message object to a handler associated with the user interface thread. These handlers then process what they receive in the context of the user interface thread, as discussed in earlier videos. The third solution used the async task framework, where application code in a user interface thread and background thread implicitly communicate by having the framework use synchronized queues to pass message and future task objects between the threads, also discussed in earlier videos. Each concurrency model has the pros and cons covered in this video, so it's important to understand your application requirements to make the right choice. Likewise, it's important to understand the gang of four and POSA patterns that underlie these concurrency models and frameworks. It's particularly important to recognize the pattern-based structure and interaction of the Hammer framework, since knowledge of its loosely connected classes alone may not clearly articulate their proper usage. The key patterns that underlie the Android Hammer and Async Task frameworks are discussed further in the next module, which also examines these framework implementations in more detail.